BRB just having a shower. <laughs> Hello, I am showering. <laughs> Ew. About 12 months ago, I had really short, yucky hair. Uh. Oh, sorry. And as well as making my skin a priority, I've also made my hair a priority. And I can say putting those things as a priority has definitely helped them. My skin has gotten much better since the miscarriage, but I believe my hormones are probably still all over the place. Despite what that sounds like, I'm being really gentle. It's just really knotty. I haven't washed it in a few days. That's the other thing too, like it's really unnecessary to wash your hair so often. And I'm getting now like some postpartum hair loss, which is completely normal. And I haven't brushed it for five days. Let's talk in bed. So I also don't completely dry my hair. I just get the bulk of the water out of it and then let it go. I thought I'd give you guys an update on everything that's sort of gone on with me postpartum. It's been three weeks and four days since my miscarriage and probably I'd say only a week ago I started getting negative pregnancy tests. So it did take about two and a half weeks after my miscarriage for my level to drop to zero what i assume is zero so i miscarried on the monday and i had the hospital appointment on the wednesday and i let them know what happened i showed them a picture of what i passed i explained everything they gave me the anti-d shot which i need to have because i'm rhesus negative they also drew my blood oh well obviously to make your anti-d they need to take your blood I don't know how all that science jazz works, but that's what they did. And then they also got a baseline for my hormone. And then I was meant to come back, I think the following Monday, do my bloods again, and then do an ultrasound to check that everything had passed. Tim came home the Tuesday after I miscarried. And I had basically said to him, look, I'm willing to put everything aside. Do you want to just start fresh? Like, let's just try and move forward do you want to come home and we'll go from there so he said yes he does want to come home so the tuesday he flew in i picked him up from the airport and he stayed with me and we were fine i was still bleeding so i bled all week it was pretty like what i would say average like an average period type bleeding there were a couple of days but like later on maybe Sunday Monday where they were where it was like heavier but it got like heavier and then it went away I did pass some clots in that time but I knew that what I passed initially was the products of conception they call it I actually went to the Rubens on the Saturday night by that stage my bleeding was quite light I had a really good time I went out and saw some friends that was great. It was great to just like let my hair down after everything being so chaotic and dramatic and, you know, heartbreaking really. And it was like a full month since I'd found out that baby didn't have a heartbeat. In that time frame, I think the first two weeks were definitely the hardest for me. I'd cry at the drop of a hat. I was just like sobbing uncontrollably when my focus then turned to like I need to naturally pass this I don't want to have surgery I don't want medical intervention like my focus went on that and then everything that happened with Tim kind of like took away some of the focus on actually losing the pregnancy yeah, so going out and having a good time with my friends was just sort of like what the doctor ordered, you know. I needed 
some fun. Come Sunday, he had asked me, can I go to my mate's house for some beers? I was like, yep, no worries. I'm treating this like it was a brand new situation. I wasn't gonna let anything from the past affect how I felt about it, whatever. Like said to me, yeah, I'll be home. I'm not going to drink much. I'll even take my car over. So if I don't drink much, I can just drive home. If not, I'll just get a taxi. Won't be home late. No worries. See you later. Have a great time. And I literally did not have a care in the world. Like I wasn't even worried. I was like, surely he can prove to me that he can essentially behave go have beers with his mate and come home and continue on his life as normal come 8 p.m i get a message sorry i'm not coming home blah 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 whatever excuse it was completely incoherent message like i could barely understand him you could barely type i was like right <laughs> this this is not happening this is not happening. The next day I was just like, look, I've just had enough of this behavior. It's just, it's not on. It's not fair for Zay that you just disappear. And that next morning I had my hospital appointment and he didn't show up. He didn't message me. He didn't ring me. I rang him about uh, 20 minutes before, like on his street about to like drop Zay off to him. And I was like, hello. Um, I've got a hospital appointment today at 9.30. And he um, had some choice words for me. And then I had some choice words for him and hung up. So I had to call the hospital and say that I couldn't come. I had no one to look after Zaid. And I had told them like what had happened. That I was still bleeding but it was fine. I had no fever. No signs of infection like I was pretty confident that I'd passed everything so they were happy to discharge me on the basis that like I knew the signs of infection and if I was concerned to go see the GP and they wanted me to go get some bloods done with my GP but I just thought no I'll just wait and if my pregnancy tests don't show up as negative after three weeks i will go see my gp and then the situation with him i was like look you know i can't i can't keep doing this zay doesn't deserve this he doesn't deserve you like coming and going coming and going disappearing at a time and i basically just blocked him on everything i blocked his number i blocked his emails and yeah that's what i said to him i was like i'm blocking everything don't talk to me you know we can sort this out in court so that was the monday and that was good i felt really good about doing that about essentially just blocking him from everything and just enough is enough enough is enough like what you put me through like are you an actual dumbass to go and do the thing that started the thing you know yeah he's a dumbass so anyway fast forward to thursday we'd not spoken since monday morning a little email pops up from his old business email i was like shit i didn't think to uh block that one anyway it was a big old apology <sighs> whatever i spoke to him reiterated that wasn't happy what i wasn't happy with what they didn't deserve just reiterated all that and he had come to some sort of realization some sort of epiphany that his life needed to change that for the past six years he had been acting and behaving a certain way that there was no longer acceptable because he was going to lose his child i want to we want to tim and i want to share that with you guys share that journey with you guys at some point but it's something that he's right in the thick of at the moment but we definitely want to be transparent with you and I think it's definitely a story that does need to be shared for other people that will probably come in the next month or so I would say anyway so yet again I've given him one more chance uh, you know he's had millions but this time does seem different he does seem very adamant at the things that need to change that you know he does need to make this change he's taken accountability for his actions over the past few years he's cut out things in his life that were not healthy for him going to go speak to somebody and get the necessary help and support that he needs and in my mind i have been there for him been involved in like his mental health quite closely so i want to be there for him if he's ready to make a change and willing to 
walk around that corner and do the hard yards to get to a good point in his life. I don't want to turn my back on somebody that is willing to change. He has always said to me, this is who I am, I'm never going to change. Now that he's saying, I don't want this life, I don't want to be this person, I want to change, he absolutely deserves a chance. There is two sides to him, there is two people, two distinct people. And the person that is with me and his son and Nixon, when he's with us, he is a fantastic partner and a fantastic dad. He cooks for me, he cooks for us as a family, he does jobs around the house, he helps me with the children, he is always encouraging me to go and do my own thing, going and having my own time. He has also supported me through my own mental health issues. Whilst he didn't support me through my miscarriage, it obviously triggered something in him to go and behave this way and be this other person. This other person that we don't want in our lives, that we don't deserve to have in our lives. I'm hoping you and I and Tim, we can go through this journey together of whatever is ahead for us. Physically, my bleeding stopped the Monday or the Tuesday. So it was seven or eight, eight days of bleeding. And then there was another further eight days of just very, very light spotting, barely anything, but obviously something. And it wasn't until the spotting finished that my test turned negative like a couple of days after that. Now I'm just waiting for my period. I can't wait to have that. I've been feeling a bit yuck today and my period's due in about three or four days on a typical cycle. So I'm not sure when the period comes back after a miscarriage. I believe it's either four to six weeks or it could just turn up as normal or it could just take a little bit longer because of whatever the hormones have done. So yeah, uh, mentally, I'm okay. Today was kind of the first day in a while where I thought I really miss my baby. My parents are up in a few weeks and we were going to be doing a gender reveal then and you know just when those milestones come up like a due date or when I would be 30 or 40 weeks I think that's when I'm going to be sad but I'm definitely not a wreck anymore and yeah I'm not a wreck anymore. I definitely feel so privileged to have had the support and love that surrounded me and lifted me up and held on to me really closely. I think that's the thing that has gotten me through. Plans for baby number three? <laughs> Look, this whole thing has been quite traumatic and it's not something that I'd ever like to experience again. And also too, I just can't envision right now having a baby with Tim when he's busy focusing on himself and we don't know yet what that brings to our lives we don't know what the future holds with him we don't know how things are going to go so that's the focus we're just going to focus on I'm going to focus on the things that make me happy which is talking to you guys I'm hoping to start regularly uploading every Thursday at 6 p.m for the Aussies don't no idea what that is for anybody else but that's what I want to do. I want to put some time into my channel because it's been really therapeutic and helpful for me. And hopefully you guys get something out of it too. I always look at the timestamp for how long I've been talking and then I'm like, far out, Jamie, you've got to edit this down. <laughs> that's going to be so much fun. I'll see you next Thursday. No idea what sort of videos I'm going to bring to you every week. Probably just me laying in bed telling you about my week, I suppose. Just let me know. Let me know what you want to see. I'm going to let you into my life. And we're going to get Tim on camera. And I think we're going to have a sit down with him and discuss everything that's been going on with him. What do you reckon? Anyway, I love yous. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. All that stuff that the YouTubers say. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye-bye.